Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Michelle Arnold. She's with the University of Kentucky Extension Room at Veterinarian there. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. How are you? I'm good and I'm glad you're here today because I feel like we're going to talk about something that's very important with beef cattle prices, input prices. There's a lot of our beef cattle producers that are worried about profitability and maybe trying to find ways to cut some of these input costs. But herd health is probably not that area. Boy, you said it's there. Um, not, the, not the time, not the time or place to cut. Um, there's just too many, uh, the expenses far outweigh what it costs to have a, just a good herd health program. Uh, treatment, treatment options are very expensive and not very successful. It's much better to control problems. And a lot of times we look, sometimes with herd health, we can't actually see the tangible dollars, but having a good herd health program in research has found for cattlemen to be profitable and it keeps the longevity of their herd. Exactly. And prevents many of the, or not necessarily prevents, but controls the, the diseases that are common. You know, that we know are out there, we know cause problems like abortion, and um, they're not expensive. Every year I have the students do the same project where they go through the cost of vaccinating a herd correctly, and it always runs right around $20 per head. Rarely ever do we get much over $25. So it's not expensive. It just, there's a perception that it's, it's going to be $100 a piece, and it's not. So, um, and, and the cost of medications is going up and availability is going down. So if you get a sick animal, you are, um, you're looking at a much higher cost. Absolutely. And it's just like with our own health. It's good mm -hmm. to keep ourselves healthy, preventative, take the vaccinations. But if you were to say, if a, if a farmer were to come to you and say, what can I get by with? What's the minimum I need to do to my cow herd? What would you recommend? So the minimum that, that I recommend for cow-calf herd is the five-way respiratory vaccine. That includes IBR, BVD, PI3, and BRSV. And I know that's just four, but BVD has two, two different types. So that's why you, you end up calling it a five-way. So you've got the respiratory vaccines. We need to vaccinate against lepto, leptospirosis, and that usually has five serovars. So that will uh, that'll show up as L5 in the name of the vaccine. And then if, if bulls are being used, it's best to include Vibrio in there, which is the V in the vaccine. And that's it. That's one combination shot. And then um, black leg for adult cattle depends on your situation. I advise it. It's cheap and easy, gives some protection to the, to the newborn calf as well. So um, two shots total plus a dewormer, and that's all you really need for a year. And, Absolutely. Um, yeah, just the choice of vaccine, best to talk with your vet to decide if you want to use modified live or killed. There's benefits and drawbacks to both. So that's where your vet really comes in handy to talk to them, find out what's best. And if they do not have a, a veterinarian that they utilize, would you recommend going ahead and establishing that relationship and getting maybe some advice from them about their herd health program? It would be an excellent idea. The sooner the better. Um, here in the next year, uh, the plan is to remove all antibiotics off the shelves from, from all the uh, uh, like tractor supply, rural king. Uh, so there won't be any antibiotics out there. So it's going to be imperative to have a relationship with a vet if you're going to get medications. So um, get, that, get that established, get them out on your farm, show them what you do. It's not something you have to, you have to do once a year, basically, that they need to know who you are and what you do. We have a list that I think that you and maybe a couple agents compiled mm -hmm. of all the different types of vaccinations. Right. Um, I try to keep that updated. You wouldn't believe how quickly the companies change. Companies change, names change, new vaccines come out. So I do try to update that annually. Having that good veterinary client patient relationship is important. It's always somebody that you can lean on and fall back on. So Michelle, I certainly appreciate the information that you shared with us today. And if you have questions or you would like to see that list that we were talking about, make sure to contact your local extension office and we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.